Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Happy Easter to all those who are here and to all who are listening in by the miracle of the internet and other devices. We're delighted that you will be able to worship with us this morning on the occasion of the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We were not there, but we remember it as if we were, because that is our faith. Let us worship God this day. Good morning, welcome, West Good End. Morning. Good morning, it's an Easter morning and it's a beautiful day out there. Yes. Our call to worship, anytime you see anything in bold, that means we do it in unison. Early in the morning light, the, the women, women went, went to Jesus' Jesus tomb. tomb. The tomb was empty, the stone rolled away. For God's love is stronger, stronger than, than death, death itself. itself. Let us join our voices with Mary Magdalene we, we have, have seen, seen the Lord. Lord. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The gathering prayer. Loving God, let us all praise the Messiah, the King of Kings. Our hearts sing with joy for Jesus Christ has risen from the tomb and has been and has ascended into your loving arms. Our faith has been restored for he walks among us. Our sins have been born and we are cleansed by his sacrifice. He hears our prayers and answers them. He knows what's in our hearts and minds. Let us open our ears to hear your words so we may draw closer to you. Let the whole world be one with you as you are one with us. Let us rejoice and loudly sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior is with us today. Amen. Amen. A call to repentance and faith. Sorry, the first hymn is Christ is Alive. Stand if you can. <laughs> Thank you. 
our call to repentance and faith. The joy of this Easter Sunday reminds us of God's resurrecting power. Let us confess all that turns us to death so we can know the grace of new life through Christ. Trusting in God's grace, let us make our confession first in silence, then in unison. Take a moment for silent prayer. Let us read our prayer of confession in unison. O oh God, you raised Christ from the tomb and shattered the powers of sin and evil. Raise us from the tombs of our sin, O oh Lord, and bring us new life in you. You bring us good news of Easter joy. Forgive us when we cannot hear it. You send us out to share your love. Forgive us when we cannot carry it. You cast a vision for peace and justice. Forgive us when we cannot imagine it. Forgive us when we stand in its way. For you are the God of the empty tomb, the one who makes all things new. Amen. A declaration of God's forgiveness. God says to us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Christ says to us, do not be afraid. We need not fear. We are forgiven. We are loved. We are redeemed. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Please stand for him, the hymn, Thine is the Glory. May the Lord be with you and also with you. Our prayer of illumination. Loving God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the great news of eternal and abundant life throughout Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism, baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. The king of kings 
The gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And it reads as follows. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there in the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. <coughs> Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. Doesn't it seem like every day 
there is another judge, another jury, another trial, another deposition, another witness. It doesn't stop. And we don't usually think about it this way, but that's the context that really does help us better understand the reality of Easter. Why is that? Well, because Easter is the unfolding of a case, the case of Jesus of Nazareth, the greatest case of all. Easter is about Jesus' resurrection, but it is also about Jesus' crucifixion. You can't have one without the other. When I was a boy, there was a popular song playing on the radio. I think it was Frank Sinatra who sang it, sang it. That went like this, love and marriage, love and marriage. They go together like a horse and carriage. <laughs> try, try, try to separate them. It's an illusion. Try, try, try. You will only come to this conclusion. You can't have one without the other. That's how we need to think about crucifixion and resurrection. They go together. We hear about Easter through witness testimony. And it's testimony that has misunderstandings. It has challenges. It asks us to believe things that may not be credible, that we don't think are real. But that is how Easter puts reality itself on the table. How it demands that we, the jury, deliver a verdict and address critical questions. Who was Jesus of Nazareth? Who are? the witnesses. What is their evidence? Is there any confession? Is the confession admissible? Is the testimony credible? And we need to do this 1900 years after the fact and the evidence has gone cold. Ladies and gentlemen of jury, that's a tall order. But the evidence will show, and John's Easter testimony will uncover that what we are looking at is actually two pieces of the same coin. One piece is about misunderstanding, and the other piece is about confession. One side is understated, and the other side is said out loud. In the testimony you will hear, misunderstanding and confession go together. You can't have one without the other. Those two sides are the key to understanding the central dilemma that John poses in his resurrection case. And that is the dilemma that we as human beings don't have the ability to grasp the very idea of resurrection, which is the underlying idea of Easter. John will present a witness who has a disability that we share. And that disability is that we think of death as final. We think of it as futile thing beside that. We believe that resurrection is just unreal. But the purpose of John's entire gospel, and he says so later on in John 20, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Notice that John does not say by seeing and believing, by believing. John's Easter testimony will show, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that believing passes through misunderstanding and is realized by confession. In John, Misunderstanding and confession work together to comprise belief. Peter gives us an opening statement in Acts that just a lot to the questions posed to the jury earlier. He says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him how they put him to death by hanging him from a tree, how God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, 
how Peter and other witnesses to all that Jesus did and where he went. This is a clear statement by Peter that is all about confession. There is no misunderstanding in that statement of the case. John chooses different. Instead of a big picture, he goes into a deep dive into the very early moments of the resurrection incident. And that is the heart of the Jesus case. It is the moment where life refutes death, where light overcomes darkness, where misunderstanding gives way to confession. The moment of inauguration of the first Easter proclamation, where Mary Magdalene is no longer afraid and says out loud, I have seen the Lord. John knows that jurors like you are never present in the actual situations that they will eventually judge. Well, they still need to reach a verdict. They need to say what is their truth out loud. Ladies and gentlemen from the jury, this is why John wants to help us out by calling Mary Magdalene as his star witness. This witness is otherwise unknown, except for the fact that she had been one of three women who sat at the feet of the cross and who witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus in real time. John wants you to know that there can hardly be a better witness for resurrection than a witness who was at the crucifixion. The two experiences go together. They form a single testimony from Mary Magdalene, as composed and told to us by John. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's something else John wants you to know, and it has to do with Mary's mental state, her state of mind. John wants you to see that Mary is suffering an internal crisis. It's a crisis between the seeing as believing experience she had at the crucifixion and the I can't believe what I'm seeing experience at the resurrection. It's a face off between two versions of reality. I believe what I see, I don't believe what I'm seeing. And so that is how through Mary, John walks us through the problem of our human difficulty that we cannot understand resurrection. Mary Magdalene does not comprehend what is happening before her very eyes. The tomb is empty, all right, but she thinks it was empty because thieves stole Jesus' body. Nothing else makes sense. When John shows Mary weeping, remember that Jesus wept outside the tomb of Lazarus. Those are tears that show that resurrection is filled with empathy for the human condition that we have of not being able to understand it. It tells us also that misunderstanding is not a Mary thing. It's not a woman thing. It's a human thing. It's part of our DNA. And to make that point, John calls other witnesses before Mary. He called Nicodemus. He called the religious leaders. He called the Samaritan woman at the well. And finally, he calls Jesus' own disciples. Each and every one of them had an interaction with Jesus that resulted in a statement of misunderstanding. That's the chain that leads right up to Mary in her dark and quiet place. And would you know that Mary's own misunderstanding is the one closest to the disciples? Because they had thought Jesus told them Lazarus was asleep, when in point of fact, Lazarus had died. Mary thought Jesus' body was lost, when Jesus' body was actually found. The pattern of misunderstanding leads to Mary in her quiet, dark place. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you may have heard that in this community we sing about a quiet place near to the heart of God. Mary was in a quiet place, but she was crying because of evidence that the heart of the Son of God had stopped beating. That is the cause of Mary's utter sense of devastation. And it's a feeling that John wants you, the jury, to feel.
just like her. Her sobbing was her aloneness. Her sobbing was her shock that the light of the world had been turned out. It was not shining anymore. All hope was gone. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Mary's sense of loss is our loss. Mary is us. We are there with her at the tomb because we too hope for a cure for our desolation, to our defenselessness in the face of death and dying. But, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please know that a cure does come. It comes when Mary realizes that her seeing is believing experience is transformed into a confession experience by the resurrection case. This is when she makes her Easter declaration, I have seen the Lord. As members of this jury, you know that Jesus said he would call his sheep by name, they would recognize his voice, and they would follow him. Jesus calls Mary by name. She recognizes his voice, and she follows him. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is Mary's confession. This is evidence which John the Evangelist wants us to see, wants to offer us as admissibility. And it demands that you reach a verdict that is consistent with that confession. It requires a verdict in keeping with others you may have heard, such as this, which has said, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven, and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. Just as Jesus asked the man born blind to be healed in John chapter 9, he asked you, the jury, today, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. On this Easter Sunday, we might feel like crying the tears of Mary Magdalene for someone we loved who died, like Jesus shed tears for Lazarus. But please know that the Gospel of John respects your tears, respects all of our tears, but it also invites all of us to wipe them away and to confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to say, Lord, we believe, and to worship him. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let that be your verdict. Amen. Amen. Join us in singing him, crown him with many crowns.
Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, the to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, give, to give our thanks and thanks praise. For the prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer, what's in bold, please repeat in unison. In the blessed hope of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord of endless light, saying, By your grace, O oh God, God raise, raise us from death, death to, to life. life. Life-giving God, we pray for the church. Let us be witnesses to the good news of this day, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and that his love and life are extended to all. By your grace, O oh God, God, raise, raise us, us from, from death, death to life. Life-giving life God, we pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death and destruction that is cast over the nations and peoples of earth. Spread out your feasts of plenty and peace for all. By your grace, O oh God, raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for our communities. Help us to proclaim your message of reconciliation, that you show no partiality, welcoming all who trust in you and call on your name. By your grace, O oh God, raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for loved ones. Let your steadfast love surround those who suffer. Uphold them with your mighty, merciful hand and open for them the gates of healing and joy. By your grace, O oh God, God, raise, raise us from death, death to life. life. Eternal God, show forth in us and in our world the good news of your saving power and love so that all may believe and have life in you through Jesus Christ, who is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. We make these and all of our prayers in, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Community News. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that everybody is here today. This is a beautiful, beautiful day, and we're so grateful that some of you have come back to us and joined us today. A beautiful day. We're so happy about that. Um, this wonderful, beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful Easter day. Thank you. Um, our pastor, as you can see, is not here. She is traveling. Reverend Noreen Santos is traveling with her family abroad. Um, so we pray for their safe travels. She will be back in the pulpit uh, next week. So uh, she'll be looking for you. So we hope that you'll return, please. Based on that, we are so grateful, so grateful to have our Reverend David Vidal here. Let's give him a hand. Now, those of you who come to um, the Bible study on Sunday, you know how great David Dahl is, but we're so grateful when he's able to come into the pulpit and share the word with us. So thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to try to be like Noreen, but um, please forgive me if I mess up. So please forgive me. Now Okay, sorry, everyone. 
This is a praying church. So we have, um, as you can see, prayer requests. We have our Reverend Margaret Thomas here as well. We are always grateful for uh, Reverend Thomas. Um, if you have any prayer requests that you might want to share with us in our praying community, there are ways that you can reach out to um, Reverend Margaret Thomas, and we will gladly put you on our prayer list. Our prayer list, um, I want to say unfortunately, but fortunately, it has had some new additions, so please make sure that you um, read it and pray for all these people. There are people that are on this list who've had um, incidents, but they're recovering gratefully. Um, one of the people, I hate to shout her out, but anyway, I love my sister, Miss Mary Maxwell. She's had an incident and now she's back, so we're so grateful that she's back here today. Prayer is very good and very important, and we are praying in church, and we definitely know that. So thank you. Okay, so now we pray. We have a monthly um, prayer time that we meet. This next one will be um, this Wednesday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. That's on the Zoom call. Be Feel free if you can't stay for the whole time. You could come in for a few minutes and pray and then you can leave or say a prayer request or put a prayer request out or pray for someone. This is the best time to come. It's a wonderful uh, event and please feel free to come out on Zoom. Bible study. Bible study is very important in our community. So as I stated, we have the adult Bible class, which is led, led by our Reverend um, um, David Vidal. That's on Sunday at 10 a.m. If you could do it on Zoom if you like, or if you don't want to do it on Zoom, or you want to come into our church, which is always grateful, we have a screen set, out, set up for you, and you can join it during that way. We have our weekday Bible study, um, which will be, it's a date here, but anyway, we have a weekly Bible study, Monday. which meets on Monday at 6.30 and Tuesday at 10. We, that's led by our Reverend Ken Thomas, who's also here, and we're always grateful for him as well. And I believe um, Elder Tina Serlin is assisting um, you as well with the Bible study. So I'm hearing that it's a very good thing for you to attend as well. So Monday or Tuesday, pick your choice. Food pantry. Food pantry is very important, as you know. We have food pantry on Mondays and Wednesdays from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Um, I just found out that it's falling a little short, so I have to go shopping. But please feel free. If you want to bring food, you can, canned goods. Or if you want to assist, there are always ways to assist in our community. Food pantry is needed. We have meetings in person, the Al-Anon meeting, which is on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. That's in person here at the church. And an AA, an AA meeting here Thursday, 7 p.m. That's also in person. Meetings on Zoom, our choir. Our, we're, not, we're off next week. This Tuesday coming up, we're off. So the following Tuesday is April 9th. Our choir, we meet on Zoom. Feel free if you'd like to join us, come on Zoom, and we'll gladly appreciate you coming. Giving is worship. Giving is worship. That's a part of what we do. There's so many different ways that you can give. You come into our church, and of course, you can give that way. Um, you can give online. You can send checks in. There's so many different ways. But the best thing is that giving is important. We are so grateful, and we are so grateful to God for everything that we have. Thank you.
worship you, Hosanna forever. We worship you. The angels bow down at the thought of you. The darkness gives way to the light for you. The price that you pay gives us life brand new. Hosanna forever. We worship you. Hosanna forever. We worship you. For you are the joy that my soul of for. The man that was slain on my name and the one I adore. King of kings, ruler of everything. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Hosanna forever, we worship you. For you are the joy that my soul longs for. The lamb that was slain for my sins and the one I adore. King of kings, ruler of everything. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Hosanna forever, we worship you. For your patience and kindness and favor and mercy and honor and glory. Because you are worthy, we can't live without you. We can't read without you. We can't sing without you. Hosanna, Hosanna. No greater love in this world but you. No one can compare to the things you do. Wherever you go, I will follow you. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Someday every time come to bless your name. This one may not wait till we pass away. And whatever the test you will bring us through. Hosanna forever, we worship you. 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 Our um, prayer of dedication. God of the empty tomb, your grace astounds us. Your generosity fills us to overflowing. Accept these offerings as sign of our, signs of our gratitude and bless our work on behalf, on Christ's behalf. May we love as Christ loved. May we serve as Christ served. Call us forth into your word, guided by Christ's spirit. Amen. Amen. Next hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today. <laughs> Thank you. 
go into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the peace of God, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Yeah. 